Well, let's lift our hands and, and thank Jesus for all he's done. Yes, Father, we thank you. We worship you. We praise you, Father, for all that you've provided for us. Man, you are so awesome, Lord. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made 2,000 years ago. We never get tired of thinking about that. And that song, The Darling of Heaven, was crucified. And uh, everything he died for, you and I can receive. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, man, I, uh, I, in, I was teaching in second year today, and uh, I'm teaching a new course called Living Free, and I pulled up that same song that you guys sang today about, um, you know, it was my cross you bore, and worthy is the lamb, and and you know I, I can't get past that song. I mean, that's an old Darlene Check song uh, from Hillsong, and yeah. and um, but I can't get past the phrase, "The darling of heaven was crucified." Jesus, man, you think about guys, the foundation of our of our freedom and the foundation of our healing and everything else we receive from the Lord. It, it all it all started because. God saw you and I in the, in the uh, plight that we were in and, and um, he sent his only son, the darling of heaven, and from heaven to earth. And he was born of a virgin. He had to be born of a virgin because the bloodline that gives us our nature comes from, comes from the a male. Uh, and, and he had to be born of a virgin. Then he lived a sinless life, fulfilled all 662 or how many of her commandments. And then he, he, he was executed as a in, totally innocent person. And uh, then, uh, and he took our place. He received our sicknesses and our diseases and our sins and everything that, all the all the bondage and addictions and everything, and then and then uh, he died, and then and then God raised him up from the dead. He defeated sin's penalty, the penalty for our sin. All of sin and come short of the glory of God, and then the wages of sin is death. Sin's penalty is death, and Jesus paid that penalty. So yeah, so you and I. You and I don't have to. So we could become righteous and holy and healed. And, and how many of you are born again? If you, if, how, did, how did you get that way? Well, you believed that God raised Jesus from the dead, right? You know, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Guys, everything else, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, Colossians 2, 6 says, so we walk in him. Everything else that we receive from the Lord comes the same way. You simply believe what Jesus did for you uh, is appropriated for you when you confess, man, Jesus, you're my Lord, but you're also my healer. You're my strengthener. You're my wisdom. You're my provider. You're my shepherd who's directing my steps. You're uh, you're my anchor, you're my redeemer, you're my restorer, you're my counselor. Just fill in the blank, <laughs> whatever you need him to be, guys. And we confess that and then we receive that. Yes? yes. And, it's that, and, it's that, and then we praise him for that. And it's that, it's that simple. And then uh, you guys were also singing a song about how we, uh, you know, pray, uh, how we praise him ahead of time. And uh, so I'm gonna, we're going to talk along those, I'm going to share along those lines with you today. It's, it's not initially going to sound like a healing message, but it'll bring healing to you. Amen. Amen. So let me tell you funny, is that okay? Yes. This is called poured into the river. So a minister was completing a sermon on temperance and with great emphasis, he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. With even greater emphasis, he added, if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. Caught up in the fervor of the moment, he shook his fist, 
fist and toward heaven and bellowed, if I had all the whiskey in the world, I'd take it and pour it into the river. His sermon completed. The minister sat down to catch his breath. And the worship leader stood and tried hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> he announced, for our closing hymn, let us sing number 365, Shall We All Gather at the River? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is funny. So my beautiful bride Janice is here today. Why don't you stand up, honey? She is awesome. She makes me look good for sure. <laughs> I went to one church several years ago and uh, this lady, one of the students, walked up to me and she, I was introducing Janice to her. She says, oh, you brought your daughter today. <laughs> Made Janice feel good. <laughs> Let's look at Philippians chapter three. Again, I wanna uh, say thank you to, to uh, Daniel and then now Donna and, and all the others that are helping. Who, who all helps and serves as interns or does something in uh, either with healing now or, w or with a uh, healing discipleship. If you're helping with that, why don't you guys all stand, okay? If you're serving in any capacity, just wanna, just wanna thank you guys. Appreciate everything that you're doing. <laughs> Praise God, amen. Thank y'all, thank y'all. See, it takes a lot to, to, to do, to do what, what, what we do. And I appreciate, uh, appreciate Daniel's vision you know, for healing school and he now healing now, and um, and how you've been so faithful, Daniel, over the years, and so uh, great rewards are yours, sir. Amen. Uh, there's there's greater there's greater fruit in front of you than behind you. Amen. Praise God. So I want to look at uh, Philippians three, and let's look at. Um, Gives, gives me hope. Paul was a good preacher and he had four chapters here in the beginning of chapter three. He said, finally. <laughs> and, he, and then he just preached two more chapters. <laughs> finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for you it's safe. Finally, my brethren, Rejoice in the Lord. What does finally mean? After a long time, typically involving difficulty and delay, rejoice in the Lord. Or it means, finally means in such a way to put an end to all doubt and dispute, rejoice in the Lord. Or after all is said and done at the end of the day, this is where I want you to land, rejoicing in the Lord. So I simply want to share uh, a message with you today called Making Joy Your Default. All right. Making Joy Your Default. Uh, making it the home page of your heart. Okay, default defined means to revert automatically to a pre-selected option. It's what you fall back on that is second nature to you. Finally, my brethren, after a long time that has involved difficulty and delay, make joy your default. Or finally, my brethren, in order to put an end to all doubt and dispute, make joy your default. Or finally, my brethren, wh whichever, whichever circumstance you, you're in today, you know, finally, my brethren, after all that has happened, all you've been accused of, all that's gone wrong, at the end of the day, make joy your default. Make joy your default, not depression, not oppression, not worry, self-pity, sadness, etc. And many Christians' default system is offense, victimhood, depression, self-pity, and then they try to praise their way through it. The problem is, is the home page of their heart is on the wrong setting. 
Several years ago, I had to get one of my sons to help me because I'm a technological immigrant. <laughs> All of my children and grandchildren are natives. <laughs> and, and so, you know, sometimes they just say, turn it off, Dad, and turn it back on. You know, anyway. <laughs> so, but anyway, I don't know how this happened. But, but the home page of my laptop came up MSNBC. I said, Jesus, deliver me from this to some other decent site. And I, have to, I had to have my son come help me change the home page of my laptop to another decent site. But some of us have our home page, our, what we default to, set to depression.com or selfpity.net or alwaysoffended.org. And you cannot get free from those things that you are defaulting to. If that's the homepage of your heart, that's really what you believe. That's what you that's what that's what's second nature to you. And it's not it's not none of those things are really your nature. T today, each of us has the opportunity to reset the home page of our hearts to joy.com, yes. rejoicealways.org, yes. or praise God and everything.net. And I, and I know, I mean, I'm, I'm being a little lighthearted and everything here, but, but, uh, but this example is really true. Yes, is. This is really where we are. And this is exactly where some people are today who are struggling with especially chronic illness, okay, is they've allowed because of the illness, because of the length of time, because of the, you know, think about the woman with the issue of blood. Right. She'd been that way in... 12 years, and then she went to every physician she knew and spent all she had. And she wasn't better, she was worse. After 12 years, she had to get the home page of her heart set on Jesus is better than that.com. She had to change the picture on the home page of her heart. Are you, are you, are you listening to me? And it, it didn't happen overnight. She had some relative come to her and, and our, our neighbor say, hey, I, I was healed at Jesus' meeting. And then and someone else came and brought her dinner and, and then told her about the Jesus' meetings. And, and then someone else who was a no-count cousin of hers that, that, that was, lived in sin and everything else. And how she told the story of how she pressed through and touched Jesus' garment. And, and the woman with the issue of blood said, well, if that gal can get healed, I can get healed. And we don't know if those specific details happened, but something happened with the woman with the issue of blood who had been in that chronic condition for a long time, for years, and had given up all hope in the natural but what if something happened to change, to switch the homepage of her heart? And this is what we're going to do today. We're going to switch the homepage of our heart where we're not, it's not, you know, well, I guess this is, this is my lot in life.com. Or I, I guess, you know, the, that person got healed, but I, I guess it's not for me, dot net. I mean, what you, you tell me. You tell me what it is that you're defaulting to. Because we're changing that today. Amen. 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 It's changing. Look at Philippians. We're in Philippians 3, but look back at Philippians 1, verse 9. And this I pray that your love may still abound more and more in knowledge and all discernment. That you may approve things that are excellent. That you may be sincere and without offense. Everybody say without offense. Guys, the little foxes spoil the vine. And the enemy comes to us with offenses through people so he can get us stuck like Chuck in a groundhog day of our own making where we, where we, stay, where we stay free from everything Jesus provided for us instead of free to. We stay bound 
and, and, and something because we're blaming other people or we're blaming God or we're blaming ourselves. And he said, I'm praying that you would be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me, and there was a whole bunch of stuff happened to him. And in fact, he's writing this from a, from a, a jail cell. He's writing this from jail. And he said, I want you to know the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Instead of being offended, mad at God, mad at people that threw him in jail, he said, this has turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Instead of, of, of his, him being offended, his heart reverted automatically to a pre-selected option of rejoicing. How is this going to turn out for the furtherance, furtherance of the gospel? How could that be possible? Well, you're, you're reading this with me today, aren't you? Thank you. So good. You, it, this, he would not have written this if he would have stayed stuck in blaming other people and filing lawsuits and whatever, whatever was available to him. Are, are you hearing me? And then look, look at it. <laughs> Go, go on and read verse 13. So it's become evident to the whole palace guard and all the rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord have become confident in my chains. But look, look at verse 15. This is powerful. Some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife and some also from goodwill. The former preach Christ from selfish ambition not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my chains, but the latter out of love, knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and in this I rejoice, and yet, we, yes, will rejoice. Wow. Even those that are doing it for selfish ambition, even those, how many of you know somebody like that? <laughs> Don't look to the right or to the left and incriminate yourself on who that is. How many of you know somebody that's kind of promoted themselves and it just, you know, I mean, it just, I, I, you know, I don't really, I, I, I don't really get into judgment and all that, but I, the, the ones that I'm tempted most to judge are those who are judging others and those who are trying to promote themselves and going around trying to get close to Andrew and, you know, and, and weaseling in and doing all this stuff, manipulative, ta I mean, it just warms your heart, doesn't it? How many of you know anybody who's done that? Okay, listen, guys, uh, d stay free, stay free, stay free, stay free, stay free from that, stay free from that. That is that what that's the enemy's trying to do is get you stuck there so that you got your focus on that person. And, and Paul said, hey, man, I don't care whether it's in pretense or whether it's in truth or sincerely. He said, at least Christ is preached and I'm, I'm defaulting to joy. I'm going to be rejoicing. <laughs> I haven't done that well in every situation. But because, uh, you know, <laughs> we're working on a genocide. But especially, especially when somebody does that and they throw somebody else under the bus and hurt my friends. Okay, that's, I mean, I want to pull a sword out and <laughs> cut off their ear or something. <laughs> I'm just confessing my sins to you. But, that, but that's not where Paul was. Paul said, he, he re, listen, finally, after all of the stuff that you're tempted to get offended about and things not going well, I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to rejoice at the end of the day. I'm going to praise God. And man, nobody can take that from you. I don't care what they do. I'm just going to praise God. Look, commit, commit the justice and the vindication and the vengeance to the Lord. 
He's a lot better at meeting that out than you and me. Man, most of us would have excused ourselves to have a long self-pity party if we, were, if we were Paul, if the same things would have happened to us. But you know why? He, uh, he, knew, he, knew, before, <laughs> he knew before the uh, internet or before the web, you know, websites or anything else were created, he had, he, he had the uh, homepage of his heart set in the right place. That's powerful. Look at... Look at Psalm 126. Psalm 126. Psalm 126 and um, verse 1. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with what? Laughter. Everybody say laughter. And our tongue was singing Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. We're not sad. We're not mad, but we're glad. The homepage of my heart is joy. Amen. And in every day of the world, you you can wake up and you can be sad, mad, or glad. And I'm just choosing to be glad. Amen. And did did you know in Matthew 5, 14... Well, let me just back up and say this. The way the world identifies real Christians is by their joy. That's, right. that's, that's our identifying factor. That's how people can tell there's something different with you when all hell is breaking loose and you're rejoicing. And, and Matthew 5.14 uh, confirms that Jesus called you and I the light of the world. Are, are, are you the light of the world? Where's all the lights? All the lights of the world. You're the light of the world. Yes? But did you know how to turn on that light? Proverbs 13, 9. Can you guys put that up? This is such a powerful verse. Proverbs 13. Everybody say, I'm the light of the world now. Because Jesus said so. But how do I turn on the light? The light of the righteous... The light of the righteous, the light of the righteous rejoices. Our our light to the world is our demonstration of joy when tough stuff hits. Whenever we fall apart like a $15 suitcase. (laughs) Accounting for (laughs) inflation. Since Biden, right? <laughs> Whenever we fall to fall apart like a fifteen dollar suitcase, in default to fear and panic, in difficult times, we're putting a bushel basket over our light. Y'all remember? Y'all remember the little Sunday school song? This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, won't let Satan it out. I'm going to let it shine. Hey guys, how do we hide? How do we hide our light under a bushel? By not by failing to release joy when everything else is going wrong, by failing to by focusing on how long it's been, by focusing on mistakes we've made, by focusing on what other people have done. And Paul said, No, I'm not doing that. I'm rejoicing. Amen. Finally, after all of that, my homepage is set on joy.com. Ask your neighbor, where's your homepage? So Joel 1.12, Joel 1.12 says, all the trees of the field are withered. Why? The trees of the field represent people in the world. Why are they withered, Joel? Because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Proverbs 24.10 
It says, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. What does Nehemiah 8.10 say? The joy of the Lord is your. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength or your joy is small. When all the time we got the joy of the Lord, Jesus had more joy than all of his brothers. Amen? Amen. And if you go back to Psalm 126 that we were reading, Psalm 126 says in verse uh, 5, it says, Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. They'll reap in joy. How do we reap? Joy. How many of you want to reap some healing? How many of you want to reap some wholeness? How many of you want to reap financial blessing? How do we, listen, we sow in tears, but we reap in joy. So you're praying for the harvest and reaping what you've, what you've sown and, 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 and you've sown and you've sown and you've sown. But the Bible says we reap with joy. These are, these are powerful verses. Look at, look at Psalm 59 Verse 8, Psalm 59, and verse 8, I'm just giving you a lot of scriptures, and then we're going to, uh, I've got the airport in sight, we will be there sometime. <laughs> Psalm, Psalm, <laughs> Psalm 59, 8, but you, O Lord, shall laugh at them, you shall have all the nations in derision. Then look at Psalm 2. Psalm 2, and everybody say, as he is, is. laughing at the devil, so am I. I. Psalm 2 and verse 4, he who sits in the heavens, who is that? God shall what? The Lord shall hold them in derision. Everybody say, ha, 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 I like what my pastor Bob Nichols said. Forced joy is is better than submitted depression. Job 5.22 says, you shall laugh at destruction and famine. Guys, we've got to learn to laugh at the devil. Laugh at sickness. Ha ha. Ho ho. He he. Ha ha. Ha 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 Ho ho. Ha ha. Years. <laughs> I found a drinking buddy right here. <laughs> Years ago, there was this magazine that came out, and it had these guys that were just rolling over laughing. Laughing, laughing, and the and the and the uh, thing that uh, subject underneath it was the devil said what? Yes. <laughs> the devil said what? <laughs> the doctor's report says what? Your body says what? Ha ha, ho ho, hee Ha ha, ha ha, ho ho ho, hee hee hee, ha ha ha, hee hee hee, ha ha ha, ho Job 5.22, it says, you shall laugh at destruction and famine when you put sound to joy. It will come out as laughter, just like sorrow will manifest itself in crying. What does this have to do with healing? 
I, I'm glad you asked. Pro, Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Ha ha, ho ho, hee hee hee. Ha ha ha, ho ho ho, ho ha ha ha. Ho ho ho, ha 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 
Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet what? Praise, Praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. He's the help. And what, how, what's the avenue through which He helps us is when we start praising God. And in case you didn't get it, there, look at 43, verse 5. Um, is that it? No, 40, yeah, 43, verse 5. Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet what? What's he, what's he saying, guys? He's saying to hope and put your hope in God, not in men, not in circumstances, not in finances. And he'll help you. He will help you through whatever you're dealing with. Praise your way through to victory. Praise your way through sickness. Praise your way through pain. Listen, guys, prayer will even do, praise, praise will even do what prayer won't. Look at Habakkuk. When you get to heaven, Habakkuk, he's going to ask you, have you read my book? <laughs> or it's Habakkuk or Habakkuk. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. Habakkuk no, chapter 3, verse 17. Though, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no fruit, Food, though the doctors say I'm going to die with stage four cancer and, and there's no hope for me, though the flock be cut off. Oh, I just added that in just because that may be what you're dealing with. And there's no herd in the stalls. Yet I will what? Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He'll make my feet like deer's feet and He'll make me walk on my high hills. There's someone watching today or you're here and you're really you're not strong in the natural. Let the weak say, I am strong and start praising Him and you're going to start walking again. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Now, guys, look, we know these stories, okay? So it's not like I'm, I'm not telling you anything you haven't heard before, you know, a, a, a dozen times that, that, that you've heard it. But, but uh, man, we, we, we've, got to, we've got to hear it again and again and again until we, we decide. Uh, listen, I, I am once and for all, once and for all, I'm changing the home page of my heart. Yes? Well, I'm not going to read through the, I don't have time to read through the whole uh, story in Acts chapter 16. Paul and Silas are trying to discern the will of God. They tried to go to Bithynia. The Holy Spirit wouldn't allow them. They tried to go to Asia. The Holy Spirit wouldn't allow them. And then he had a vision in the night. Uh, Paul did. He said, come over to, a man said, come over to Macedonia and help us. And so they went immediately, and, and uh, they met a woman, not a man. And uh, then, man, this demonized gal got set free, who they were using for fortune-telling and all kinds of things. And then they got, Paul and Silas uh, started a jail ministry. But they got stripes on their back, and they got thrown in jail. Do you remember in Acts chapter 16? Okay, and... and uh, and, the, and we don't know what time they got thrown in jail. But magistrates put them in jail. And typically magistrates would not work past, in that day and time, past 6 o'clock. They would work you know, longer, longer hours. Today it would be 3 o'clock. But anyway, so but what time did it say they, they praise God? At midnight. So it took, so you know, Paul gives me hope. Because it took him and Silas, you know, a few hours Okay, to land right. right. But they started praising God. Yeah. And you remember, you know the whole story. And again, we could go there and read, but the bottom line is the, the foundations of the prison were shaken. Everyone's bands were loosed. Okay, the jailer got saved. You know, man, I mean, all kinds of, and his family got saved. All kinds of good things happened, but it was because, because Paul and Silas finally reverted to their home page and started singing praises to God. Just, just look at Acts 
16, and we'll just, we'll just pick up at a, um, let me see what verse I want. And um, yeah, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and uh, singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them suddenly. Everybody say suddenly. Okay, listen to me, guys. This is not a play on words. Your suddenly is coming. The woman with the issues of blood suddenly came. Your suddenly will come. Okay, if you follow what Paul and Silas did, and they were singing and pray, uh, praising God, and then suddenly there was a great earthquake. The foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were open. Everyone's chains were loosed. And you know the rest of the story. Uh, man, guys, it's like this. You begin giving and tithing and, and then the transmission goes out in your car and the IRS audits you and you have unexpected medical bills, school costs. You make a, a commitment of ministry involvement and all hell breaks loose. Satan stirs up strife in your family, accusations at work. You discipline yourself to get out of debt and from nowhere strife hits your marriage. Man, it, you know, or you're, you're just starting to follow God, come to school, and, and then the attacks against your body become worse. Listen, guys, Paul and Silas were just doing the will of God. And, then, the, and, and then, then they got thrown in jail. They didn't whine and cry, and God, how come you let this happen to me? And they delivered a demon-possessed, victimized, and controlled girl, and this, was a, this is my thanks? Have you ever felt that way? Maybe recently? The temptation at these times is to give up, throw in the towel, get off the word, blame others, and blame God for your present circumstance. And that's exactly Satan's strategy. Mark 4.17 talks about the, sto the, um, the stony ground. It says, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble or become offended. Listen, guys, instead of becoming offended and letting go of the word, why not rather praise God? Yes? It's easier, it's easier to pray under pressure than to praise under pressure. Praise under pressure is a faith decision because we never feel like praising God. Well, I just can't do that because it wouldn't be genuine. Well, I've praised God when everything around me was screaming, you're crazy. But like my pastor Bob Nichols said, um, forced joy is better than genuine depression. <laughs> ha ha, ho ho, he he he, ha 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 ha, ho 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 ho, ha 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 ha. Oh, sometimes. Your shout and your praise is the only way out. What happens when we praise Him when everything's going wrong? It changes you. It changes your circumstances. It changes others around you. It, it violently shakes Satan's best laid plans for your life. It releases suddenlies into your life. It opens closed doors in your life. And it sets captives free. Amen. And it's the key to household salvation. Yes. Finally, guys, and I'm not going to be quite like Paul and give you two more uh, chapters, but look at 2 Chronicles chapter 20. 2 Chronicles 20. <clears throat> and... Um, Verse, verse 12, O our, o our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude. This was Jehoshaphat and, and his people praying because they had multitudes coming against them. They were outnumbered 10 to 1. And they said, we have no power against this great multitude that's coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you 
Now all Judah with their, uh, was with their little ones and their wives, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, verse 14, and he said, verse 15, Listen, all you Judah and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem, do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go down up against them, verse 16, and they'll surely come uh, uh, against you. But verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Do not fear, nor be dismayed. And what did he do? Guys, well, when they, in verse 21, when they had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. The praisers went out. The praisers went out. The praisers went out. Praise the Lord, His mercy endures forever. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the enemy. Guys, when, when they did what God told them to do, man, the Lord set ambushments. When they set the homepage of their heart to joy.com, praise God and everything.net. Amen? Amen? Things turned around. Amen. Psalm 8 2. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained praise. That you may silence the enemy in the avenger. How many of you want to silence the enemy? Then Psalms 9, 1 through 3. I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they shall fall and perish at your presence. Guys, the enemy will fall. The enemy will fail. You're not going to fail. The enemy will fail when you start praising God. When you make joy your default. When you make joy.com the homepage of your heart. And, and, you, and you praise God. And you laugh at the devil. God laughs. He laughs at his enemies. As he is. So are we. In this world. A merry heart does good like a medicine, guys. Um, this, is, this is God's Word to us today. Sometimes we just need to act on it by faith. Uh, there's so many times I've acted on this, I didn't feel like it. But I'm telling you, my feeler got involved, and then I started laughing, and it was genuine. And my, and, and my depression became ingenuine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Father. Today, today, we cancel out. Now, who's God speaking to that you need to set, reset the homepage of your heart? Stand up, or then those who are watching at home, you, you can stand up. Stand up. We're going, to re, we're going to reset the homepage of your heart. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Just put one hand on your heart and say, Father, today, by the help of the Holy Spirit, the homepage of my heart is changed. Depression.com is gone. Always offended. .net is gone. We, we obliterate that. Erase it from my heart. I allow you by your Spirit to establish the homepage of my heart is joy.com. Praise God in everything.net. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I praise you, Father. Come on, praise Him now, guys. Come on, praise Him. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now laugh at the enemy. Ha 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 ha. 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 Ha ha ha.
We worship you, Lord. We praise you, Father. We glorify you, Lord, Father. There's the healing power of God right now. Cancers and tumors, all kinds of cancer. Uh, leukemia is being healed right now. All kinds of cancer is dissolving. Cancer cells can't live in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, we praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Uh, ears are opening up. Someone's ear is opening up in Jesus' name. Someone's uh, right ear is opening up in Jesus' name. Father, we praise you. Thank you, Lord. Come on, praise him with me, guys. We praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The back pain, back pain is, is going. Back pain. You've been a pain. In Jesus' name, I'm a pain to you now. I'm going to be a pain to you now. Ha, ha, ha. I'm laughing at you. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ho. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ho. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Man, there's a healing power of God, guys. It's flooding your bodies. Eyes are being healed. Uh, glaucoma is being healed. Cataracts are being dissolved in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hair follicles are growing. Praise God. I receive that. In Jesus' name. Hair follicles are growing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Guys, the only part of the Word that does us any good is the part that we do. Now, I'm just telling you, this isn't, yeah, in the, in the flesh it's difficult because you've got to start in the flesh. But I'm telling you, you need to go and get locked in somewhere in a bedroom, a closet or something and start praising God. I'm telling you, and you're going to get vision, okay, and you start laughing at the devil, laugh at the pain. Laugh at the report. Get the doctor's report and just laugh at it. Now, don't laugh at the doctor. Just laugh at the report. You can't. That, I'm not saying that's not a fact, but here's the truth. And you, man, I'm telling you guys, you, you laugh at the devil and you're going to silence him. He's going to turn around, fall back, fall down, and, and in your, your test is going to turn out to a testimony. I know, listen, I know what I know that I know that this is the key to many of you receiving healing today. Changing, resetting the homepage of your heart. And it's to joy.com. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Pastor Greg, before you leave today, I want you to tell them, uh, many have heard this story, but I feel like uh, the Lord just wants to remind us of this story when the frivolous lawsuit was happening at the minister's conference and what happened to you when the refreshing of the Lord hit you and Janice. Yeah, you Would know, you tell that story again? We, uh, We've been talking about yeah. going back and redigging some wells yeah. and we need to be reminded of what yeah. happened in these moments when a real life situation happened to Greg and Janice that could have taken them out. And this isn't just one thing, it was multiple things. And uh, so, yeah, if you would. So uh, we were, uh, you, and you guys could sit down. We, we, um, we, we were going, we went through a, a frivolous $9 million lawsuit. Okay, it was over counseling. It got, got dropped two years later, uh, but then it gave rise to an involuntary church plant where my worship leader, otherwise known as the church split, where my worship leader took a third of my congregation and went down and started another church and, in town. And it wasn't the fact that, and yeah, he knew who, who the money people were. And so anyway, it just, it, the bottom line was that people, it was more about relationships. People left that we were in, oh, yeah. we poured in, in and we were hurting, yeah. we were bleeding. We were dying. We were, uh, we'd forgiven, okay? But I'm bleeding on the inside. And the Lord said, you've been wounded in the house of your friends and you need to let me heal you. He led us to come. Andrew had been to my church three times and almost, I mean, you got to come to my minister's conference, Greg. And 
I said, I don't need an, I don't need another minister's conference, Andrew, where people are comparing themselves. And anyway, but but Bob Nichols encouraged us to go. We went, and um, that's where we met Jerry and Ernie Garcia, and they laid hands on us, guys. They laid hands on us, and we and, and I mean, were bleeding. We needed healing. Yeah. And we went. We fell out under the power. Okay, and we cried yep. until we couldn't cry anymore. Remember, though, we, you sow in tears, you reap in. And then we laughed until we couldn't laugh anymore. They picked us up and carried us to our room. And, and people, we were, we were a sign and wonder. People would walk by, try to walk by our door and watch us. And, and they couldn't walk. They, they'd just fall. They just slid down the wall and fell on the floor and had to, cr you know, crawl. And the next day, I couldn't talk. All I could say, Andrew tried to get me to testify. All I know is it's good. And then I, and I, como soco do boto kioto. I just start praying in the spirit. And but, but guys, what happened is we went up that mountain one way, and we came down another because we just decided to joy in the Lord. And it brought healing to us, Jerry and Ernie Garcia. Uh, that you know, his ministry is one of joy, and and he got ministered to and free there, and and uh, it totally set us free and healed us, and we were able to see uh, our situation through God's eyes, and God totally redeemed that whole situation, and I'm here today because because of that time, and it was just powerful, and uh, everybody was watching. It was just Jerry and Janice and me and Jerry and Ernie laying on the floor, crying and then laughing. And then the next day we couldn't talk, and, and, but people were impacted by it. It was, it was very, very powerful. And it, 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 all started, uh, it all started when we just, all right, God, um, I've been wounded in the house of my friends. And he said, I want you to, I want you to get, receive healing. And then, and then we and ended, ended up with joy and, and we got healed and we'd never been the same. That is Amen. so awesome, isn't it? Amen. 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 Let's all stand to our feet, if we will. And um, we've just been imparted with DNA. Spiritual DNA has just been given to us to take us into what God has for us up ahead. Do you recognize that moment right now? Yeah. We, we've been imparted with spiritual DNA through this teaching today that God loves you so much. He's preparing you for what's up ahead. You're loaded. Tell your neighbor, you are loaded. Amen. You're loaded with the Holy Ghost, with the anointing, with the truth of God's word. And you know what? You are not going to be defeated because you are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Would you come and get ready to minister? Those of you who are our disciples today, our healing disciples. And if you're here today because you are believing God for a healing and you want someone to minister to you, you have come to the right place. Those of you online, I want to just remind you, many of you know this already, but we have prayer ministers who are standing by right now by you calling 719 area code 635-1111. And no matter what time zone you're in, someone is available to take your call. We're seeing breakthrough. We're seeing powerful things happen on a regular basis. And you know what? You are going to see the same thing. Praise God. He sent his word, Psalm 107, verse 20, and he healed them. There's no distance in the, in the spirit. It's amazing how God can do this. But because he's God, he's already set all this up ahead of time. And then he said, it's a done deal. It's finished. Now, you know what he's asking? Who will believe the finished report? Amen. Amen. Who will believe the finished report? Amen. You're going to have to decide. I either believe this or I don't. You'll have multiple opportunities. You'll come up against situations just like Greg did. And the enemy will try to throw stuff in your face. He'll try to discourage you, get you to back off of healing, of all things supernatural. 
you'll have to decide. You know what? I am a believer and believers believe. I do believe. I do believe. And you know what the Bible says? Then these signs are going to follow those who believe. Amen. You got some signs ready to follow you. We got somewhere to go. We got something to do. We're not going to get stuck like Chuck. Amen. We're going to keep moving forward in all that God has for us. Come on, one more time. Can we just lift up our hands? Man, there's just a strong anointing in this place right now. Anointing to count it all joy. An anointing to praise him in the face of the giants. Praise him when the lions are growling. Praise him no matter what is happening in us or around us because he is greater and he's greatly to be praised. Not just a little bit, but greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you in our hearts right now, in our emotions, in our attitudes. We magnify you and we thank you for your faithfulness and we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for coming today to our Healing Now. You are dismissed. Those of you who want further ministry, come on out into the aisles and our ushers will direct you to our healing disciples. And we are excited to be able to minister to you and see you experience breakthrough today in Jesus' name. Those of you joining us on the internet, we love you. Next week, don't forget, we're going to have Chad Gonzalez here. It's going to be a great, tell your friends about it. It's going to be a great time again in the realm of the spirit. In the meantime, you stay blessed and stay healed in Jesus' name. Amen.